today I'm checking out a wonderful guitar that I was really looking forward to seeing. It's the Joe Duplantier, lead singer and guitarist from Gujira's signature Charvel guitar. Let's see it guys. Wow! I knew this guitar was white, but this is looking brighter than my future. Please don't stop watching because of the dad jokes, I make them occasionally. Usually I'm not a fan of the satin finished guitars. I really like white guitars, but the satin finish always puts me off. But in this case, in this guitar, wow, it, it looks really, really nice. They did a good job. Let's see, first impressions. The first thing that I notice is this is not a real binding. This is painted on. It's okay, it's looking good on this top. Double humbuckers. Truss rot adjustment wheel is very conveniently placed there. Hmm. First time I see this uh, like diamond shape pickup selector. We will go in depth later on with this. But look at this master volume. It's placed all the way down here, so it's not in the way of the picking. It has my favorite bridge and tailpiece combination to pneumatic style. Beautiful ebony fingerboard. It's uh, it's looking great together with this white top. This is what Charvel is calling a licensed Fender Telecaster headstock. I couldn't imagine how this licensing goes since Fender owns Charvel. So it's really something formal, I guess, give him, giving them the license for the headstock. But it's looking really good. This neck feels really, really thin. I imagine that uh, measuring it, it we will see something like thin C or U shape. I love how the mahogany color contrasts to the white color of the body and look at this neck joint the cutaway of it gives you a really good access to the high frets yeah this is comfortable locking tuners the Gujira logo on the headstock and I have to check out where these guitars are made because there are two factories that made them for example the RT series are both made in the USA Corona factory the Mexico Ensenada factory and I suspect that some of the models are made at the Indonesian Cord factory but I have to check it out. Let's have a quick history lesson. So the Charvel brand was founded in the 70s by Wayne Charvel in California. After working at Fender for three years, Wayne started his Charvel guitar repair where he would refinish, repair and upgrade out of warranty Fender guitars. He was basically hot rodding them and making them into a shreddier version. Unfortunately, in the year 1978, Charvel filed for bankruptcy and the company was bought by Grover Jackson. Yeah, that Jackson. Then came the 80s, the most shreddy time of it all. Artists like Randy Rhodes, Eddie Van Halen have all been touched by the Charvel legacy in some way by using parts or bodies supplied by Wayne Charvel. In 2002, Fender acquired Charvel and the brand was reborn. The present day Charvel guitars and specifically the RT series are made in both the Fender factories USA and Mexico. Some of today popular Charvel artists include Guthrie Govan, Angel Vivaldi and our guy from Gojira, Joe Duplantier. True to Charvel history, this guitar looks and feels like a hot rodded Telecaster. In fact, the only guitar that I can compare it from experience is the Fender or better yet the Squire Jim Root Telecaster. Obviously there are some huge differences between the two guitars, one of them being that the Jim Root Telecaster has active pickups where the Joe Duplantier one has... Wait, 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 I need Joe to explain this one, I love his explanation. Here we go. The choice of the pickups for that guitar is very important. Duncan designed pickups are good because they're passive. So there's a, this great dynamic when I, when I play, it goes room, room, and not brr, brr. That has got to be the best explanation of passive versus active pickups. I have been trying to explain this to guys for years and he did it in like five seconds. That was wonderful. Anyways, let's finish disassembling this guitar and check out the many interesting specs that it has. A couple of things worth mentioning before I start with the specs. This guitar comes without the case. The case was bought separately. It belongs to a friend of mine who unfortunately is selling it because he recently had a baby. A beautiful baby girl and he doesn't have the time to play anymore. But man, if you're watching this video, just don't do it. That's a good guitar and you should keep playing it. Guys, you shouldn't sell your guitars because you're going through some changes in life. You will end up regretting it. Anyway, 
Let's go over the specs of this guitar, starting with the body. The body shape is called San Dimas Style 2. San Dimas is the birthplace of Charvel. The body itself is made of mahogany. Most dealers will say it's NATO, but the official website states it's mahogany. Then you got mahogany neck with beautiful ebony fingerboard. And this fingerboard is the perfect choice for this guitar because it contrasts with the white body and I really love it. 22 big and comfortable jumbo frets. And the interesting thing about this ebony fingerboard, it has compound radius. It starts from 12 inches and finishes at 16. We will measure it later and we will see. Joe says that he really needs the compound radius of the fingerboard so he can do the finger style picking and tapping that he utilizes in a lot of songs. Scale length is uh, the usual for Fender type of guitars, 25.5 inches. Other than that, something unusual, you have double humbuckers. The body of the guitar is painted in this beautiful satin white finish. Even though I'm not a huge fan of satin finishes, not at all, I like it. I would prefer it to be glossy, but I can live with this. Uh, what I don't really like in this guitar is that they've painted the binding on. Come on, they could have done real binding over here. I know it's a cost cutting thing, but yeah, at least at least they did it straight. I don't see anything too unusual here. Electronics layout is double humbuckers, Duncan design, one master volume and a three-way toggle switch. Uh, I was really curious about the pickup cavities. I was hoping that they didn't paint them. Not that it's a bad thing, but I was hoping that I can see if this is a NATO wood or <laughs> just a regular mahogany as it's stated in the website. Both cavities are painted. Let's check out the pickups. So the spec list says they're Duncan design and indeed they are. But look at this HB101N at the neck and HB103B at the bridge. They should be both 103 as per the spec list, but they aren't. The pickups are open and the pickup rings are slanted. The one in the neck is thinner than the bridge and usually when you have a thinner neck pickup ring you're using shorter screws but in this case you can see all of the screws are the same length. Let's measure those Duncan design pickups. I'm expecting the bridge to be hot and indeed it is just the right amount for metal 16. Let's switch over to the neck. Let's let it settle down. 7.5 okay and the middle position 520 around the guys at charvo were considering strings to body construction for the bridge here but i'm really glad they went with the tunematic style and uh, i couldn't figure out what they are looking at the detail piece but if you check out the bridge and if you type in the number that's on the bottom you find out that it's made in the Sung Il Indonesian factory, the same factory that made the bridge for the hammer guitar that I checked last week. So these are Indonesian made, which makes me wonder where is this guitar actually made? Is it made in Indonesia or in Mexico? I am not really sure yet. And here we got screwdriver adjustable poles and they're supposed to be, yep, they're metric. All right, let's go over to the neck. You have a mahogany neck, ebony fingerboard, and the best thing about it, look at this truss rod adjustment wheel. It's very convenient. You don't have to remove any caps or anything. You just use this metal uh, piece. <laughs> yeah, you, don't, you make sure you don't lose this because you need it to adjust your truss rod. The neck has another great feature. It is reinforced with carbon fiber. And let's discuss uh, the radius on this thing. It's compound, as I said, 12 to 16. Let's measure the first frets. Let's see, is it 12? Seems to be, but just in case, let's shine a light behind the, the gauge. It's not showing, so it should be 12. See, if I move it a little bit, you can see the light under it. So if I'm not using the correct uh, side of the gauge, it would be shining a light or it would be rocking. This one is not rocking, so it's a solid 12 at the first fret. Let's check out the 12th fret. 
you can see when I'm using a 12 uh, gauge, it is shining a little bit of light underneath it. So it should be a solid 16. Yeah, it's not rocking. So it is a compound radius, 12 to 16. Checking out the fingerboard up close. They seem to be using a cheaper grade ebony. You can determine this by the pores. Nothing shocking, uh, no deep instrument marks, some glue marks all over the place, but it is normal for a guitar priced like this. Frets don't scratch, we're good here. Here you can see where the fingerboard overlaps over the body. It has a typical Telecaster nut, it's made out of plastic. And another feature that I really like is because the truss rod hole is not placed here on the headstock, you can make this clean design. Unfortunately, when the guys painted the headstock, they mismatched those lines over here. It's not a huge deal, but you notice it. The nut is 42.8 millimeters wide as stated in the specs or 1.69 inches. 52.6 at the 12th fret or 2.07 inch. I was not at all surprised that the neck is really thin. 20. 0 0.78. It's a really thin neck. Measuring at the 12th fret, still thin. 21. 0 0.82. Checking out the neck profile on the 1st and 12th frets. This is a really, really thin neck has a C shape to it and it feels thinner than the 60s style Gibson necks for example. The Telecaster style headstock is matching the body color. It's painted in white on the top, mahogany on the bottom and it has those locking black Charvel branded tuners. They're tightened pretty well. The Charvel painted logo. It resembles a guitar, I really love it. and two black string trees for better tuning stability. Back of this guitar is also painted in white and I'm gonna call this a NATO body because it's lighter than mahogany so I'm assuming it's the NATO type. I really like the colorway over here. It's really comfortable to reach the higher frets. Of course you can see the bolt-on construction. There is a good reason that uh, Joe is using a bolt-on construction. He oftenly bends the neck, achieving a Floyd type of sound. I really like this cutaway that goes to the top of the neck joint all the way to the cutaway down. It's really comfortable for higher fret axis. It has some rounded edges alongside the body too. Overall a good job of cutting this body. The strap buttons on this particular guitar were replaced with Lox brand, but I have the originals over here. They're just regular type of strap buttons with thin screws, one here in the front and one at the back. Electronics compartment has the same shielding paint as the pickup uh, cavities. You got a cheap three-way switch, 500k alpha pot, ground wire that goes to the bridge and this goes to the output jack that is again really cheap. And it has a black oval plate and a black washer. Electronics compartment cover is made out of this matte black plastic and it is shielded of the bottom side. Back of the mahogany headstock you can see the Gojira G logo and the 10 digit serial number ISC. The first digits are the year, in this case 2020. The Charvel branded locking tuners seem to be holding pretty well. I just love how they printed on the Charvel logo on the tips. They're probably Korean or Chinese made. In any case, they're cheap, but they work pretty well on this guitar. So no problem here. Overall, this looks like a pretty well made guitar. I have no major complaints about it. Needs some setup intonation and we should check it out. The guitar needed the usual stuff, some fingerboard oil, some fret polish, but it was kept in perfectly clean condition. Reinstalling everything on the guitar was uh, a breeze because there were no crooked screws, no wrongly drilled holes or anything, it was just easy.
Putting strings on locking tuners is really easy. You don't need to make any loops around uh, the tuning head. Just uh, get them through the hole, lock them from the bottom and then rotate at at least 90 degrees. I wanted to show you how easy it is to adjust the truss rod using this wheel here at the back of the neck. You just use this tool that is provided with the guitar and you can adjust it even with the strings on. Just make sure you don't lose this thing because it will be harder to deal with it. Very nice feature, I love it. Let's check out the tone of this thing. <laughs> 